Welcome back. We are now on the fourth reading of 170 Chinese Poems as translated by Arthur Whaley. I am Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi, depending on where you know me from, and your narrator for the evening. We begin with The Autumn Wind by Wu Ti, 157 to 87 BC, the sixth emperor of the Han dynasty. He came to the throne when he was only 16. In this poem, he regrets that he is obliged to go on an official journey, leaving his mistress behind in the capital. He is seated in his state barge, surrounded by his ministers. Autumn wind rises. White clouds fly. Grass and trees wither. Geese go south. Orchids all in bloom. Chrysanthemums smell sweet. I think of my lovely lady. I never can forget. Floating pagoda boat crosses Fen River. Across the midstream white waves rise. Flute and drum keep time to the sound of the rower's song. Amidst revel and feasting, sad thoughts come. Use years, how few! Age, how sure! Li Fu Jin The sound of her silk skirt has stopped. On the marble pavement dust grows. Her empty room is cold and still. Fallen leaves are piled against the doors. Longing for that lovely lady, how can I bring my aching heart to rest? The above poem was written by Wu Ti when his mistress Li Fu Jin died. Unable to bear his grief, he sent for wizards from all parts of China, hoping that they would be able to put him into communication with her spirit. At last, one of them managed to project her shape onto a curtain. The emperor cried, Is it or isn't it? I stand and look, the swish-swish of a silk skirt. How slow she comes! Song of Snow-White Heads Su Ma Sang Ju was a young poet who had lost his position at court owing to ill health. One day, Cho Wen Chun, a rich man's daughter, heard him singing at a feast given by her father. She eloped with him that night, and they set up a wine shop together. After a time, Sang Ju became famous as a poet, but his character was marred by love of money. He sold love poems, which the ladies of the palace sent to the emperor in order to win his favor. Finally, he gave presents to the ladies of Mo Ling, hoping to secure a concubine. It was this step that induced his mistress, Cho Wen Chun, to write the following poem. Our love was pure as the snow on the mountains, white as a moon between the clouds. They're telling me your thoughts are double. That's why I've come to break it off. Today we'll drink a cup of wine. Tomorrow we'll part beside the canal, walking about beside the canal, where its branches divide east and west. Alas, and alas, and again alas, so must a girl cry when she's married, if she find not a man of single heart, who will not leave her till her hair is white. To His Wife By General Su Wu, circa 100 B.C. Since our hair was plaited and we became man and wife, the love between us was never broken by doubt. So let us be merry this night together, feasting and praying while the good time lasts. I suddenly remember the distance that I must travel. I spring from bed and look out to see the time. The stars and planets are all grown dim in the sky. Long, long is the road I cannot stay. I am going on service, away to the battleground, and I do not know when I shall come back. I hold your hand with only a deep sigh. Afterwards, tears, in the days when we are parted.
With all your might enjoy the spring flowers, but do not forget the time of our love and pride. Know that if I live, I will come back again, and if I die, we will go on thinking of each other. Li Ling, Parting from Su Wu The good time will never come back again. In a moment our parting will be over. Anxiously we halt at the roadside. Hesitating, we embrace where the fields begin. The clouds above are floating across the sky. Swiftly, swiftly passing or blending together. The waves and the wind lose their fixed place and are rolled away each to a corner of heaven. From now onwards, long must be our parting. So let us stop again for a little while. I wish I could ride on the wings of the morning wind and go with you right to your journey's end. Li Ling and Su Wu were both prisoners in the land of the Huns. After nineteen years Su Wu was released, Li Ling would not go back with him. When invited to do so, he got up and danced, singing. I came across ten thousand leagues, across sandy deserts in service of my prince. To break the Hun tribes, my way was blocked and barred, my arrows and sword broken, my armies had faded away, my reputation had gone. My old mother is long dead. Although I want to requite my prince, how can I return? Lament of Si Chun About the year 110 B.C., a Chinese princess named Si Chun was sent for political reasons to be the wife of a Central Asian nomad king, Kung Mo, king of the Wusun. When she got there, she found her husband old and decrepit. He only saw her once or twice a year when they drank a cup of wine together. They could not converse as they had no language in common. My people have married me in a far corner of earth, sent me away to a strange land to the king of the Wu Sun. A tent is my house, a felt are my walls, raw flesh my food, with mare's milk to drink. Always thinking of my own country, my heart is sad within. Would I were a yellow stork and could fly? To my old home. Jin Chia. Jin Chia, first century AD, was summoned to take up an appointment at the capital at a time when his wife was ill and staying with her parents. He was therefore unable to say goodbye to her and sent her three poems instead. This is the last of the three. Solemn. Solemn the coachman gets ready to go. Chang, chang, the harness bells ring. At break of dawn I must start on my long journey. At cock crow I must gird on my belt. I turn back and look at the empty room. For a moment I almost think I see you there. One parting, but ten thousand regrets. As I take my seat, my heart is unquiet. What shall I do to tell you all my thoughts? How can I let you know of all my love? Precious hairpins make the head to shine, and bright mirrors can reflect beauty. Fragrant herbs banish evil smells, and the scholar's harp has a clear note. The man in the Book of Odes, who was given a quince, wanted to pay it back with diamonds and rubies. When I think of all the things you have done for me, how ashamed I am to have done so little for you. Although I know it is a poor return, all I can give you is this description of my feelings. Footnote 18, Odes, V. 10 Chin Cha's Wife's Reply My poor body is, alas, unworthy. I was ill when first you brought me home, limp and weary in the house. Time passed and I got no better. We could hardly ever see each other. I could not serve you as I ought. Then you received the imperial mandate, 
ye were ordered to go far away to the city. Long, long must be our parting. I was not destined to tell you my thoughts. I stood on tiptoe, gazing into the distance, interminably gazing at the road that had taken you. With thoughts of you my mind is obsessed. In my dreams I see the light of your face. Now you are started on your long journey. Each day brings you further from me. Oh, that I had a bird's wings and high flying could follow you. Long I sob and long I cry. The tears fall down and wet my skirt. Song by Sung Zhu Ho, 2nd century A.D. On the eastern way at the city of Lo Yang, at the edge of the road peach trees and plum trees grow, on the two sides flower matched by flower, across the road leaf touching leaf. A spring wind rises from the northeast, flowers and leaves gently nod and sway. Up the road, somebody's daughter comes, carrying a basket to gather silkworm's food. She sees the fruit trees in blossom and, forgetting about her silkworms, begins to pluck the branches. With her slender hand, she breaks a branch from the tree. The flowers fall, tossed and scattered in the wind. The tree says, Lovely lady, I never did you harm. Why should you hate me and do me injury? The lady answers, At high autumn in the eighth and ninth moons, when the white dew changes to hoar-frost, at the year's end the wind would have lashed your boughs. Your sweet fragrance could not have lasted long. Though in the autumn your leaves patter to the ground, when spring comes your gay bloom returns. But in men's lives when their bright youth is spent, joy and love never come back again. Thank you for listening to this episode of Ame Reads. If you enjoyed this reading, please like, share, subscribe, and possibly consider becoming a patron at my Patreon. Your patronage supports my writings, my readings, and other works that I do. Also, do consider checking out the source of this particular story. Again, the link is down in the description below.